Again, with our friend, British Chamber of Commerce Executive Director Chris Nelson joins us to weigh in on some of the most pressing issues facing the country and gives his outside looking in perspective. This month, we're going to talk about Pride Month, travel and some meat restrictions. Joining us now, Chris Nelson. Hi, Chris. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on a holiday. Yeah, good morning um, to all you and every, all your viewers and happy holiday. Good morning from London. And belated happy Father's Day to you. And to all the fathers. Thank all right. Um, so, Chris, I want to start with, so you're joining us from London. I want to start with UK elections. I mean, UK is halfway through the election campaign season. Some voters there will shortly begin to receive their ballots. What are you expecting will define this election? I mean, in the past elections, it was climate change. It was Brexit. It was Europe. What's going to be the big theme this time around? So like, you're correct. We're halfway through the elections. Um, the vote will be on the 4th of July. I, I think the economy is foremost and centre. Um, and in particular, of course, the fact that you've had uh, inflation. Uh, the UK interest rates are 5.25. Uh, Bank of England has not yet looked to cut those rates. So I think the economy, uh, and obviously that affects, you know, how the business performance and outlook is. I think that's going to be key on people's minds, how they're going to see. And a lot of obviously all the parties have discussed growth and linked to that, of course, is trade and investment. So I think the economy is the foremost. Uh, and in that respect, how people will feel who can grow the economy best and manage inflation and get us into a growth target for the UK. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, how do you see the economic relationships shifting or maybe evolving based on what party leads? Um, I mean, there's Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's Conservative Party. Some are saying they, that may face electoral extinction. There's the Labour Party. There's the Reform UK Party. Or are, is, are all parties offering the same options? What's the well, difference? Well, if you look at what's... Correct. So uh, in terms of what I think in terms of policy, particularly for the UK and the Philippines, I only see that continuing to grow. Uh, I think regardless I should, at this wins. point, I think, yeah, regardless, I think uh, if you see at this particular moment, relationships between the UK and the Philippines, I'd say, are at all time high, as is the trade balance. And, you know, congrats to everybody who's worked on those efforts. That's ourselves, the embassy. Uh, obviously, Department of Trade and Industry in the Philippines. So I think almost regardless who wins, I think the those results or the benefit for the country will continue to grow and do well. Um, will there be a focus on trade agreements? I think everybody's looking at trade investment. Uh, both parties have emphasized the economy and the need to grow. Uh, obviously, in terms of the polls, you know, if you look at it, I mean, but Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, has emphasised the need to grow the economy to generate more wealth. And, of course, the Conservatives, who are the current party in power, have made the same point. So I think that the whoever is the winner, uh, the Philippines-UK trade and investment will continue to grow. It's currently now the 59th largest between these UK and other countries. And I see a lot of opportunities for it going further. Mm -hmm. um, before we get to the local uh, flavor of the conversation, I wonder, is the political crisis in France and the upcoming U.S. elections, also in November, adding color to your own political future in the U.K.? Uh, I think that's a very fair point. I mean, if you look across the world, uh, obviously France is now called a snap election. election. Uh, the UK uh, election, the US uh, election is clearly a key factor, uh, as in your program, because uh, the US obviously is a significant driver of the world economy. Um, people are looking to see what the US Fed will eventually do in terms of interest rates. Uh, so I think that, regardless of the UK result, people will still look at the US results. Uh, the French election... Is, is an unknown. Uh, I mean, this was driven, of course, by the recent European election results. Mm. But if I bring it all back in, I think the key focus, and I think that's a point that's come through our program, is when will interest rates start to come down? Has the battle against inflation 
uh, which is also relevant, of course, in the Philippines. And in that respect, uh, we've led well in terms of our pork exports to help on food inflation. Uh, all these are key factors. So, yes, I, I agree with you, Mimi. I think particularly the U.S. election, everyone will be looking at to see the signals going yeah. forward. All right. Uh, Chris, taking the, bringing the conversation back home, uh, I want to flash a photo. I, this is a, a nice photo of you and someone special as well. There you go. I'm, I'm not sure if you can see this. Can you, Chris? I He's, can. I can. He looks right. very so good. What is, locks what is in. special about this photo? Only because I'm actually in London today uh, mm -hmm. and I was able to attend the 126 Independence Day reception by the Philippine Embassy. Uh -huh. uh, and it just reinforces when we do our work, um, we work obviously closely, uh, as I said, with the Department of Trade and Investment in the Philippines, with a lot of government departments, also the Department of Finance. But of course, we have very close links with the Philippine Embassy in London, uh, with the trade section led by Michelle Sanchez. And this is just reinforcing. It was great to see the Philippine and British business community celebrating together in London, the 126 mm -hmm. Independence Day and being there to be part of it and reinforcing the close ties between the two countries. And of course, Chris, one of our more important connections would be, you know, we get a lot of our pork from the UK. Uh, on a side note, the Philippines has placed a temporary ban on importing live cattle and meat from the UK following uh, the confirmation of mad cow disease in Scotland. Um, how big of a setback is this? And, and I know you want to clarify, this does not cover pork, but the, how does this impact you know, pork imports from the UK? Correct. If at all. Correct, it doesn't affect pork, and we anticipate that's going to continue to grow strongly. Regarding the beef, that is obviously a disappointment. Uh, my understanding it's one isolated case in Scotland. It's a temporary ban. I know that the UK government and DEFRA, our agricultural section, has worked very hard to lift that ban, and they will continue to work with the Department of Agriculture. If I look and be much more focused in terms of pork, we anticipate it will continue to grow. It's already the second largest market, the Philippines after China. Uh, we're very pleased that the lowered tariffs have been extended now until 2028. And the, the, business, the board that we work with, that's the Agricultural Horticultural Development Board, AHDB, will be at WOFEX, uh, which is going to be in July, in the, uh, the sorry, end of June and beginning of July, and will continue to drive. And pork exports, along with other factors, will be a help in terms of fighting inflation because, of course, that's key in the Philippines, as in other countries. And of course, if inflation comes down, then there's an opportunity going forward at some point for Banco Central to also reduce their overall yeah. bench rate. Of course, also good news in helping fight inflation is the president just extended the lowered tariffs for pork until the year 2028. So that's great news for everybody. Um, shifting gears, Pride Month, uh, June is Pride Month. Um, I know that London just held its first ever LGBTQ sports fest this week. Um, I'm curious, and you, you have an upcoming event as well, uh, Pride in Action, about how, you know, we build inclusive cultures. What are some of the lessons that the Philippines can learn from the UK when it comes to building inclusive cultures about workplace diversity, equity and inclusion? Yeah, so look, we're very pleased to be hosting this event. It's going to take place on the 20th of June in mm -hmm. Makati. Um, and I think it just heralds the fact that the UK has been one of the leaders in terms of LGBTQ, in terms of rights, in terms of diversity, and recognizing that and embracing and in endorsing that in terms of obviously discussing it, um, taking on board those points. Uh, rights are very much enshrined in the UK. Um, we celebrate and welcome diversity in the workplace and, and appreciate all cultures uh, as being key to the UK in terms of its diversity as also the economy. So there's a lot to learn from that. And I think that we are, I'd also like to say that we've worked in this conjunction with the embassy. We've obviously mm -hmm. been supporting that. And I'm looking forward very much to this event. And I think it can only assist. Uh, mm -hmm. And we will continue to do so. And we warmly welcome all the people who are participating on the 20th of June in McCarthy at and, our event. And also upcoming for you guys, you guys are very busy, is, is an event uh, prom on gin. It's a gin event? <laughs> 
Yes. Uh, I mean, the Philippines is well known. It's one of the largest consumers of gin. Uh, this is our 11th World Gin Day. We've worked all the time with Inebra San Miguel. Uh, we congratulate them. I think they're now 190 years uh, in terms of just their recent anniversary. Uh, we will have the event on the 27th of June. It will also have a bartending competition. And I just want to emphasize that the UK has a whole range and wide diversity of gins as well. So gin is a growing market, uh, and it's one of those areas that we've looked at, and we've worked on this very much. As I said, this is our 11th year, and we're continuing this tradition. So uh, going to be a bartending competition, huh. and I guess that it's going to celebrate all the good aspects of gin drinking. L let's drink to that. But, Chris, are there new brands coming in? New brands or new gin investors coming into Manila? Well, we hope so. Uh, we're looking further at our events. Um, we've always had a lot of interest in terms of food and drink and gin uh, and those markets it is of interest. Uh, we continue to raise the profile of the Philippines. Uh, and as I said at the, in the beginning of our interview, the Philippines and the UK now is at 2.8 billion in terms of its overall trade and investment, which is one of the highest level it's been. And we can only see that going forward. And that's based on the work that we've done. Of course, we'd like to just also thank the embassy and the work of the Department of Business and Trade. And I think that will continue as we set, irrespective of who wins the election in the UK on the 4th of July. All right. And on that note, Chris, always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much for the time and the insights. See you soon. A pleasure and a, a very good day. And a, again, a happy holiday to everybody. And a Happy Father's Day. Thank you very much. All right. See you next month. Now,